Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out these cool uh, new morphic or soft UI design forms that I've created in Adobe XD both light as well as dark mode. And I've also put out these three dimensional blocks and uh, these spheres or donuts in the background and I'll show you how to do this right now. Before we get started, I have a telegram chat. Join the chat. Let's start a discussion. Let's share our designs. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. Now I will first of all create a basic artboard, of course, uh, where I will have my form and I'll also have my three dimensional objects. Let's get started with the background. I have already saved the color and I will put the color here, which is E3 EAFD. And this is the background essentially. I will now create a rectangle here, which is long enough to hold all the form fields that we want. And again, I am not following any sort of grid here, but I'm just trying to create something good looking. I've already saved a gradient for this uh, rectangle, which is this right here. I will give the link to this XD file in the description. Again, um, as you can see, the, the gradient has been applied. I'll click on this rectangle, remove the border, or much, much, much better. And I will also rotate it so that the darker side of the gradient is on top, the lighter one is at the bottom, essentially. Also, I'll increase the border radius to about 50. Now, soft UI definitely requires a good amount of border radius so that it looks soft, of course, to the eyes and it the shadows are distributed properly as well. So I have this right now ready to go. I will now create a basic box shadow by clicking on this shadow button here. So the, for the Y value, I will put in 24. For the X value also, I'll put in 24. And for the blur, I'll put in 42. Now these are very even like values, which are actually good for us. Now I will use this shadow. I will click on this shadow right here and I will pick the color picker from here, drag it to this blue that we have selected for the background. As you can see, you can't really see the shadow right now because now we have to darken the shadow. So I'll just drag this circle, which is the selector, and just drag it towards a darker blue, uh, which is mixed with black, of course. Now, as you can see, it's now much more visible um, and I'll leave it at this for now. One more thing I will do is just duplicate this rectangle, maybe take it out of this uh, right here and what I will do is now reverse these now I will create the text field which is of course important for our registration form now I've found a sweet spot of what the height should be so I'll make it 99 on the height it looks pretty good right here I will also increase the border radius to 500 of course you can change it to a thousand as well but I've changed it to 500 so that it's completely the border radiuses are completely rounded now this is more or less for reference and I will make sure that it is 42 pixels from the left of this rectangle and on the right as well has the same amount of margins of padding. Now that, that I have this input field set up, the next step is to create the inner shadow. Now Adobe XD does not support inner shadows, but we're gonna find a different way. So I've picked the pen tool from the left right here and I will click here to create one point Click here again in the middle of this input field around here another time. And once more, I will create another edge on this right, on this corner right here. And I will create another one here. I'll just extend this. And as you can see, it's creating a line of sorts, extend it to this edge. And also basically extend it till this end of this circle here. So it's basically moving out of this rectangle. Now what we need to do is copy the shadow that we've used. So the color of the shadow here is this C9D2EB. I'll copy this from here and I'll give this line or vector that we've created here the same dark blue color. I will also increase the size of the border to about 12, uh, more or less 12. I'll change some values here. So a round cap uh, for more smoothness on the edges as well as this a round join so it's more rounded around around the joints as well uh, next thing is I'll do is double click on this vector or line that we've created and double click on one of the on these anchor points just double click on these anchor points adjust them to make sure that they're in line with this rectangle and the edge and on this end as well I'll double click here to make it just expand 
and just adjust this from here just like that perfect now now that we have this set up i need to make sure this looks like the inner shadow so what we'll do is go to the right here and click on background blur once this is selected i'll click on this arrow right next to black background blur and as you can see there's something called object blur as you can see it's now gone but i'll reduce the object blur to about 15 and you'll see the magic see how there's this sort of inner shadow which we've created here i can reduce this to something like 12 or even 10. what i will do is line it with this rectangle so it's slightly on the edge of this rectangle what i'll do is first of all just copy this rectangle so that we have two copies make sure that this rectangle is on the top so i can drag from this artboard i can drag from the assets on the left and just put it on top rectangle at the top this path at the bottom select both the rectangle hold shift select the path and say command shift m to mask it as you can see now i have a inner shadow of sorts one more thing that i'll do is select the path and remove the fill from the path wow now it looks very soft and nice like a proper inner shadow I'll essentially this just copy this rectangle here and if i go inside this this mask or this rectangle select the path rotate the path so that it it is now facing the other way and it's upside down as well adjust it so that it fits to the right edge like this and i will make this essentially from this dark blue or dark grayish blue to this complete white color I can reduce the object blur here to a, maybe an 8 to make it look sharper. But as you can see, this is now the other edge of the box shadow for our soft UI. I'll basically now make both of these overlap here and just adjust them so that they are perfectly placed over each other. Select both the masks, both the rectangles and say Command G to group them. As you can see, now it has created this uh, almost perfect looking inner shadow for our soft UI. I will place the text and the icons as well inside this. Now I have essentially just copied this uh, icon here, which looks pretty good. Now that we have this, what I will do here essentially is now create the, turn this into a component so that it's easier to copy. So I'll say Command K or Control K on Windows, and you'll be able to create a component out of this. As you can see, there's a component here and default state is set now that a component has been created i will add this last rectangle to my component here so that i can then go ahead and animate as i want i will just copy this dark blue from the shadow right here as you can see it, it looks pretty okay and i'll maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. fine and what i'll do is say command x or control x to copy to cut this and once i am inside this component highlighted everything i will say command v or control v to copy it inside the component itself right below the name and the icon right here looking good one more thing i'll do is reduce the opacity to zero so that now i can see the inner shadows properly now let's start animating and creating the hover state so what i'll do is i'll click on the plus icon right next to the default state i'll click on hover state and that's about it while the hover state is selected i'll make some changes right here I'll double click inside and select both the mask groups, mask group 9 and mask group 8. Reduce the opacity of both of these to 0 and increase the opacity of this uh, faded away rectangle to about 80. So I'll go back to default state, go to, go to prototype and in prototype, as you can see Adobe XD has already set the hover trigger for us. Auto animate is good, hover state, destination, perfect. Easing, I will change to ease in out and maybe set this to 0.4 seconds for a smoother animation. Now, if I select this, go to the preview button right here. As you can see, now I can see this preview. If I hover over this, oh, see how this just lifts up and looks as if it's coming out. I can reduce the shadow to make it look slightly more softer as well, but that depends on you. Now for the much promised 3D shapes. These are super easy to create and will take just two minutes. Vectory is a free to use and a very simple tool to create 3D objects really quick. You are invited with this little project view here. And if you've used any 3D software, it looks very similar to those environments. In this, I can create any shape. For this, I will just pick up a box from here. 
and see a simple three-dimensional box has been created now what i will do is i can change the color from here as well i'll go back to my xd and this color that i've picked up it looks good i will just copy this pink from here which i've already saved and i'll go back to firefox and just copy this color into this color hex right here so i'll say command v or control v and this color is copied see how good it looks now to give it that smooth and soft ui look what i will do is i will reduce the roughness to about zero set it to zero and it now looks like a very smooth object almost very glossy looking uh, one more thing that i do is go down and this and go down to this emissions increase the emissions to about 10. i will go to the color picker right next to emission and i will paste in that pink that we had earlier copied and as you can see now this looks much softer than before and this is what i will use one more setting that i need to do is go to this box right here and if you go down in the options you can see this shadow plane just click on the shadow plane and this will give it more depth once it is exported i will also lift this up by holding this arrow and lifting it up a little bit perfect now this looks pretty good what i will do is go to this render option here and under render option you have the option to download as image and i will do just that i will change the quality to say medium and just download the image coming back to our designs what i'll do is drag this image which we have just downloaded into adobe xd as you can see this box has arrived and there is a shadow as well if i place it behind it is already looking pretty good At the end if you have placed everything correctly and just the size as well you should have something clean like this right here of course i've chosen a purple so i and which is more or less following this purple or pink color right here hope you like this video if you did then go ahead and subscribe to my channel also click that bell icon right next to the subscribe button like this video share it with your friends and i will see you every monday and thursday god bless